Have you ever wondered how to take these cheap Dollar Tree vases and turn them into something really cool? Marcy with Mixed Media Girl is gonna show us how to do it with paint and epoxy. All right, so I'm super excited. I've never done one of these before, so Marcy's gonna be walking me through it. She's gonna be doing the acrylic, and I'm gonna be doing the epoxy. So what we're gonna use today is the Amazing Quick Coat. The reason I'm using that is I want a quick cure epoxy because I want it to be fairly thick, so as it flows over, it starts to sit up a lot quicker and I don't just lose all my resin off the base. Then I'm gonna catch that in my mold and we're gonna make a really cool little tray with that also so we're not wasting all of the resin that runs down. All right, so Marcy has told me for a 13 inch mold, I need about 20 um, ounces of the resin. So we'll mix 20 ounces. Now with the quick coat, you do have a very short working time. So you need to have everything together because once A meets B, they form a very quick relationship and it will start to set up very quickly in your cup. So you need to make sure that you get that product out as quick as possible. So that's what we're gonna do. And then, so what we're gonna use for our colors today, we're gonna use Color Passion. Now these are the new gels that I started carrying from Color Passion. They are really cool. They're a translucent gel. You can build them to create a lot of depth in your piece. Uh, and then I'm also coming in with Just Resin, which is a paste, and this is Ultramarine. All right, and then I'll be following it up with the Illumilite White Opaque Dye. All right, so really quickly, I was told that we want to make sure that we use opaque colors as well as translucent colors because if we use just translucent colors, which are the dyes, you're not gonna be able to see the material on the vase. So it's super important that you bring in some um, opaque colors. So don't use mica powders, okay? That's too translucent. Even if you tint it really thick and make it opaque, it's going, you're gonna lose all of that coloring on your vase. So, all right, Marcy. So I'm so excited. She has been a friend of mine for how long now? Five years. Five years or so? Yeah, yeah we met at the Artisan Summit. Yeah. So she has over 500 followers, y'all. Uh, on Facebook and YouTube. So, yes. Oh, sorry. It's actually like 510 <laughs> followers. Sorry. She has over 500,000 followers on YouTube and Facebook. That just means you're famous, I know. right? You're famous. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. All right. So, I want you to tell <laughs> everybody out there where they can find you and all the fun things that you do. So you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, my website, etc. as Mixed Media Girl. And I do a lot of acrylic pouring projects, resin projects, and pretty much anything having to do with fluid art. One of the things I've been doing a lot recently is the resin vases. Now we're going to be making a tray today out of this, but I love to actually make a bowl out of it. and. So I have a lot of videos on that. I'm not gonna explain the whole process here, but you can check out some of my videos. I like to make resin bowls with the runoff that comes into this mold. And I've got a lot of videos on that recently. Here's a couple that I just did that I think are just gorgeous. But you can also make a tray. So that's what we'll be doing today. And I'm super excited to teach Rhonda how to do this technique because it's just, an amazing two-for-one project. Right. And then I'll be doing the acrylic pour vase, which is also a two-for-one project. I don't like to waste anything, so I like to always make sure that there's something underneath to catch all of the runoff. So I'll be doing a wood board while she'll be doing the tray. I love functional art, and I think a lot of other people do as well. And if you are an artist looking to make a business out of art, functional art sells incredibly well. So this, these are great pieces that you can take to markets or great gifts, great you mm -hmm. know Mother's Day gifts. Yeah. I do vases every single year at my daughter's school for Mother's yeah. Day. I'm actually like gonna that. donate this set to a fundraiser uh, for our community that helps the um, 
the underprivileged kids. There you go. So that's where this one's going. And I'm going to make this set for her mom. All right. Now, what's the work time with this resin? You only have about 20 minutes. Okay. So this is a very quick resin. So you need to have everything ready to go. Ready to go. I do do countertops with this. They're very small, like vanities. I really like it because I can come back and do a clear flood coat. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is our raspberry. Now, guys, I've never used these colors before. I'm super excited. So Marcy's gonna let me know how transparent or translucent I need to go on this a little more. I definitely would make it as opaque as possible. Okay. Obviously within the parameters of how much liquid you should put in there. Right. I'm gonna do two, two full pumps on that. Now, if you have a more transparent color, you can just put it on last, right? Make mm -hmm. sure that it's on the top. Is that too, is that too translucent? I think it'll be fine. Okay. Cause I it'll, can... it'll be good, a good experiment. See, here's what I'm worried about is that this, now that I think about it, I think this is a translucent. I don't think. But as long as we have that white opaque, we'll okay. be fine. All right. Yeah. Okay. So the next color I'm going to come in with is the Just Resin. And this is the ultramarine pink ultra yeah ultramarine pink Let's so it's see. almost like a deep warm violet oh it's my really god really pretty yeah like an african violet yeah now this has a tendency to be a little translucent as well i pretty much always use white you don't have to but it's a great opaque color and then i will usually have three other colors i wouldn't ten go with like 10 colors or anything but two or three would be great and they can all actually be opaque. They don't. You don't have to have a translucent. Correct. And okay. you can use the micas. You just want to make sure that you also have at least one opaque. So to kind you, of hold on to yeah, it. Yeah. If I you've got, got you. that white alumilite dye, you'll be great. But if you only use transparent colors, your vase is going to be very transparent. That's science. That's science. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is aqua. Oh yeah, that's pretty. So we're gonna do a clean pour, correct? Yes. As now you can do this as a dirty pour. So you guys that know how to do those dirty pours, which is basically we would take all these colors and we would put them in one cup and then pour it over. Right. But we're gonna do a clean pour. Which is one at a time. Right, all right. So do, is there any rhyme or reason? Do I need to do anything so special? I like to start off with um, the white usually because it's the opaque, then the other colors will sit on top. But you're going to do many layers. You could do one layer of each color, but that's not going to be nearly as exciting. Right. Especially more in your or less. Do a little more. Yeah. Maybe like half that white. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to start off with some bigger layers of colors. And okay. then as we get to the end, we'll do some more deliberate I gotcha. patterns. Yeah. Ooh, All this right. This is exciting. Can't wait to see how that looks on the white. That's pretty. I'm gonna go with this darker color. And this vase is also an interesting shape, which is the the shape of your pattern will depend will determine the yeah pattern on your bowl or your tray, whatever you're making. <laughs> so now I just keep layering. Yep. May not see this pink. I didn't think about not being able to see this pink over this dark. That's okay because you'll see it in here. Oh, okay, I'm gonna add some white. So why is it not covering my last time when you did it? It went in here. It'll get there. Well, it? okay. Yeah, it'll get I'm gonna, there. I'm gonna trust the process. Patience, grasshopper. See, it's slowly moving down. Okay. <laughs> wax on, wax on. Wax on, wax you'll off. Get it. So I'm going to just keep putting white in between each color. All right, now after you do your next color, I'm going to give you a little instruction. All right, I need <laughs> instruction. All right, what's my instruction? Okay, so you can absolutely keep going like this. One color will just continue to cover the next. Mm -hmm. I typically go in more of like a kind of a crisscross fashion. Oh, okay. So you can like take your stick and do a crisscross with it. Oh, yeah. And that way you get to see each individual color. Okay, so like this? Exactly. Like that? Yes. All well, right. That stripes, not crisscross, but close. Oh, enough. we're going to get a crisscross here going here now. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I can crisscross. Applesauce. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so we're gonna crisscross. Hee <laughs> hee! See why I do. Now you see why y'all I do countertops. Because I'm not very artistic. So just to give you guys some really good uh, uh, confidence, if I can do this, y'all can do this. How about that? Oop, I kind of slipped a little bit too much. You're a little violent with your Christmas. I'm a little violent. Now, see, I went from being nice and dainty to being crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> you like to laugh at me, don't you? So, Very easy. Marcy comes to see us at least once a year and teaches her um, art class. And we love, love, love to have her. So she just finished a class this past weekend and it was so much fun. She had some great people in her class. Am I doing this right? All right. So what so I'm I, giving her anxiety. I can see her wanting to grab the cup. I tend to just kind of do more like this. Less violent. Okay. She got to show me up now. All right. And then when you get to the end end, you do you can do the smaller crisscross. Ah, okay. So now do we can I'll also, go. if you have any spots down here, we can just kind of help them out. Surface with our tension. Gloves. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just to make sure we do. And that's because what? Full epoxy pump. likes to go where epoxy's already been. Exactly. All right. There we oh, go. Pretty good. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go not so crazy. I'm going to go nice and easy. Yeah, calm. Oh, calm. Look at that, so calm. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not known <laughs> for being calm. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hate to break the news to you there, sister, but <laughs> calm is not my forte. Look how pretty this is. Now, if you are using transparent colors like that pink, mm -hmm. the both of your pinks actually, right? you're gonna wanna put those on last so that they definitely show up. So uh -huh. you can end with a little bit of white, but I would end with, end with these colors. transparent colors. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I'll do one more like this, and then I'll save enough to end with that. All right, so I have about the same amount. You think? Yeah. I think you're looking pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna do the white and then that'll be the last of it. Right? No. Nope. Like half of that. Half of the white? Yeah. Okay. You keep you keep throwing audibles on me now. Well I wanna leave a little for the end just in case. Just in case. Just All in right. Case. Was that was that calm enough for you? Oh perfect. Wow. You're a pro now. Oh man. Yeah, watch out. Makes media girl. She's gonna take over. RK3 is coming to get you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now we're gonna do. Got to look. Think I should wait till the very end to do that. No, do it one more time. Do okay. about half of it. So, guys, I just want to let you know it's been just a few minutes, but my material is already starting to get a little bit warm. Oh, good to know. So, if you're using this, I really like it because it's thick and it's gonna it's gonna really kind of stay. But you just you need to realize that you do need to put your hurry on if you're gonna use this resin. Okay, so now, now is where you're going to be very deliberate with your design. So like where exactly, okay, so there's a big part yeah. of color there, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So let's take our stick and go a little bit less okay. with the white maybe to break that up. Okay. Yeah, over here is a big old spot of it too. Okay, yeah, so go okay. just a little bit less at a time. We still want to go fairly quickly because, yeah. like you said, we're running out of time with this. Okay. And either way, you can't go wrong with this. It's going to look yeah. gorgeous. Honestly, you could just dump the rest of that on there and it'd be beautiful, you know? Right. So, same thing here? Yeah. Do I kind of want to go over? Let's see. I'm afraid, I'm afraid I'll get too much of this color. Y'all, y'all can't tell, but I'm holding my breath. <laughs> this makes me nervous. Okay, so what I would do at this point okay. is the rest of the white mm -hmm. and then your pinks. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Should I go over that same or should I bring it down? I think I will. I, I answer my own question. Excellent. <laughs> my work here is done. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm being, I'm all nervous about being careful. All right. Okay, so, was that deliberate enough? Yeah. All right. 
Now we're going to come in with our, I think if I put this last, it's going to be too dark. Yeah, I would just, you just, can put a little bit of that in the tray okay, if good. you want, but no, yeah, just good. do the pinks now. All right, I good. Think. Get a little bit in that little white here. I act like I know what I'm doing. I'm going to get right there. You're fooling okay. us pretty well. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, let me see. I think I think next time I do one, I'm not going to pick my translucent colors so much alike. Yeah. That was completely my fault. All right. Yeah. Well, you're not supposed to agree. You're supposed to say, oh, it's okay, Rhonda. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Rhonda. You did good. <laughs> All right. Yay. Okay. Oh, I love it. I actually, wow. I like it a lot. Okay. So. We're gonna let that run for just a minute, yeah, right? Just a minute, um, mm -hmm. and then you don't want to use a torch on right. your silicone mold because it'll ruin it. But right. you can use a heat gun, or I like to just spritz it with some isopropyl sure. alcohol. Okay. Um, so let that run for just a minute. Then we'll lift it up carefully by the cup, mm -hmm. set it to the side, okay, and then let the tray finish off. Now I I heard you say something really interesting when you were teaching the class. It's super important to make sure your cup is high enough. Mm -hmm. Whatever you use that you can get your hands around it. Exactly. Yeah, if not, you're making a mess. Now, do oh, I need... Let's yeah, talk about that. Yeah, so I want to take my finger and I want to make sure that my drips run up underneath the lip of that vase. Yes. So I want to take my... Almost just like you do the countertops. You want to make sure that that epoxy runs up underneath there and creates a nice seal. Yeah. And then we can address the drips once they dry. Now you can come back ever so often and you can run those drips with your finger. And then what I would probably do, and I don't know if this would work, I'm saying this and I don't even know if it would work, but with the countertop, what you can do is once it gets to a certain, um, sets up to a certain amount, you can take isopropyl on your finger and rub it in and make it super smooth. Could you do that? Now I'm not familiar enough with a quick coat to tell you if you can do that with this one, mm -hmm. honestly. Okay. Um, but Minimally, you could sand the drips off at the end. Sure. Okay, good. Cat, and then right there. That made me nervous. I know, right? Whew. You did right. it, though. I did it. Okay, now do not move that until no, it's I'm dry. not moving that until it's dry. <laughs> it is not going to be touched. All right, now, can I just, since I have some of this left, could I just pour this in there or I just let it? I pour it in the middle because you'll ruin your design. Oh, if yeah. I'm going to add the rest to this, mm -hmm. I would just pour it all together in a cup like, okay, a, dirty like a dirty pour and pour it around the edge. It'll I can do beautiful. that. I can do that. And then also, if once this is done, you want to fill it up more, you can just put a clear coat sure. on the top, mm -hmm. which you probably should with this anyways, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that for sure. Yeah. on a customer's countertop. Oh, All right. No. All right. So I'm going to just spray this with some alcohol. We want to make sure that it's on like a mist. Just pop those bubbles. Yep. And that's going to pop those bubbles and protect your silicone mold. And then I would recommend coming back in probably like 10 minutes and spraying it one more time. Gotcha. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Maybe five to 10 minutes since this is a quick coat. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's going to be pretty. Mm -hmm. All right. Okie dokie. So that is your resin technique. Now you are going to show us the acrylic technique. Yes. This was fun. I did learn a lot. Um, I learned that I want to use a little more opaque colors instead of so much translucent colors. And um, I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. So I like the fact that you can use your resin here and then capture all of this and make two projects in one. I love that. So now we're going to do the acrylic pour vase. Now the great thing about acrylic is you have pretty much all the time in the world. Um, there's no clock really. You can mix up your paints and you can use them the next day or the next few days. Um, these are mixed media girl pouring paints. They come ready to go right out of the bottle. You don't need to mix them with anything so that's what's great about them. Rhonda told me the colors of her mom's decor, so I mixed up just a couple of custom colors. We've got like kind of a bronzy color and a gray, and then a navy blue, gold, and white. So I am also gonna do this as a two-for-one project. I've got a wood board underneath the vase, 
And for this, I need about nine to 10 ounces of paint. So I'm gonna layer my paints here in the cup. And once again, we're not on the clock. We have all the time in the world. Keep in mind what you put in the cup first is going to be what ends up on your vase. The rest is going to go onto that wood board or you can put a canvas underneath. So put the colors that you really care about in first and then the rest. And I'm just layering these a little bit at a time. That's another key factor too. Don't pour too much of any one color or that will really end up taking over. And I'm putting a lot of white in here because I like white and I like to lighten up my projects. I don't like them to be too dark. This is a 16 ounce cup, so honestly, I'm just guessing. I was just fixing the site, so <laughs> yeah. you're pretty good at guessing at 10 ounces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably just a little bit more and then I think we're good. Now, I didn't do anything to prep the vase other than I cleaned it with some isopropyl alcohol. And I've got it sitting up on a cup so that I can move it off when it's dry, or not when it's dry, <laughs> when I'm done with this. And then we're just gonna pour this on the top. I like to go essentially in kind of a bit of a tree ring. Pour slowly. You want to give that um, paint enough time oh, to cover your face. Gore. My mama might not get this. <laughs> My mama might not get it's this. It's going to be very earthy. I love it. And see, if we didn't add so much white, this would be quite dark. Wow. Love, 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 love. I might actually add just a little more paint. And that's what's cool about doing the acrylic. Like you said, you're not on a time schedule. Right. So you can kind of look at it and adjust kind of as you go. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. Now in this case, I'm actually really happy with the vase, but I'm not totally sure I have enough to cover the wood board. So I'm just gonna add a little more around. But I'm gonna let that drip. And we can let this drip for, honestly, if you wanted to leave it for 20 minutes and then come back, you'd be fine. Uh, we're not that patient. So we'll let it drip for about two minutes or so. Now, while you're doing that, talk a little bit about how they need to prep the glass. So this adheres quite well. You're gonna have to seal it, which I believe we're gonna show you in a little bit. Um, I always seal my vases with resin. Uh, and that's gonna give you the maximum amount of durability that's gonna enable you to wash it. I would still only hand wash. My motto is anything handmade, you hand wash. Don't try to stick it in your dishwasher. And when you seal it with the resin, just like we did on the resin base, make sure that it goes underneath that lip. Mm -hmm. You can seal it with um, a cake. You can seal it with a cup turner or just upside down on a cup like this. Either way is totally fine. And I usually like to put a little pinch of gold dust or diamond dust oh, in yeah. there as well, depending yeah. on the project. Oh yeah, we'll definitely do that. Yeah, this cool. is really pretty. Cool. Now, as far as having, for the resin, as far as having to prep the glass, what we do with countertops is we etch it a little yeah. bit. You can either use a very fine sandpaper, or in this case, what I did is I just took some uh, clear matte spray paint and did very, very light coat and that's gonna help the resin really adhere to that glass. Yeah, and that doesn't hurt in this case either. I typically don't, but I have done that before and it will, anything to help. So the fact that this is not gonna be a functional piece like a countertop as far as being high traffic, mm -hmm. things on it, it's not as detrimental to make sure that you sand and all of that. Correct. Being that, you know, we're gonna go ahead and seal it with resin anyway. And, and now mine doesn't have to be sealed with a flood coat. I can leave it like this, but I could come back with a flood coat and put diamond dust or something yeah. in it if I wanted to. And I would seal it because that doesn't have the maximum amount of UV, UV protection. That's right, that's right. So I would still seal it with the art coat. Yep, yep. Um, and same yep. thing with this, I would seal yep. it with the art coat. So I love using the Amazing Quick Coat. It does have UV protection, but you're right. It doesn't Not have the maximum. It doesn't yeah. have the maximum like the Quick Coat. But I mean, excuse me. It doesn't have the maximum like the art coat, but I'm most excited because I'm gonna put some diamond dust in there. Mm -hmm. So it'll look amazing. Alrighty, so. So this is about, you can always tell it'll slow down greatly on the drips. Like I said, you could let it sit here for 20 minutes if you want. We're not gonna do that because we're impatient. So I'm gonna just carefully lift this up by the cup 
and move it off to the side. There's always going to be a little bit of suction in there. And then that'll just drip until it is dry. Don't try to move it or anything. Now I usually do this on a canvas. I did it on a wood board because it's a larger vase mm -hmm. and because I didn't have a bigger canvas. There we go. <laughs> so on a canvas, it will fill in in the middle pretty quickly because it sinks. Yes. Right. And I can also push down and make it sure. go faster. <laughs> on here, we don't have that luxury. So I'm gonna probably just let it sit for like a minute to fill in a little bit and then we'll tilt. You can tilt it at any point. I just like to let it fill in. Fill in a Design bit wise, I think it looks best. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I can kind of um, start tapping this edge here a little bit so that when I do tilt, that gets pretty. Kind of like the, the resin. You're just kind of greasing it up exactly. so it'll roll. Right. Now, you wouldn't want to use a heat gun or anything like that, to, like you would resin to it get it. It won't help it move. It'll okay. do the opposite. Oh, okay. It'll dry it. It'll dry it. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so it's, you have to have kind of reverse thinking with acrylic. And yeah. But still, it's the same concept of liquid mm -hmm. will flow where there's already, already liquid. Already liquid. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so even there where I just touched mm -hmm. it, it's almost it's to already, the edge now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and tilt. So I'm gonna move slowly towards the corners and then back to the middle. And I try not to really start running it off the canvas or the board until it's pretty much covered. And you can also do this on a cake spinner to maintain your design. Oh yeah, you'd just spin it around? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be fun. I'd spin it so hard I'd have it all over the Yes, you Studio. would. Studio. <laughs> We're not going to lie. We agree. <laughs> they know me well. <laughs> That's one of the things I love about doing the vases, too, is you always get this really cool feather yeah. design. Yeah. It does. It looks like a feather. And there you go. So on this, you just let it dry. You actually don't even have to seal it. But um, I typically do. I'll just use like a spray sealer. You could absolutely resin it if you'd like, especially since this is on a wood board. Um, but that's about it for this project. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah. All right, beautiful. Okay, I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm not sure my mama's gonna get that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can see that my piece has almost quit dripping. I did run a stick around the rim and I took care of some of those drips because it was really starting to slow down. You can see that because I used the really translucent colorants that my color has gotten really, really soft. That is really pretty, I like it. I think next time I'm gonna go with a little more opaque colors so I have a little bit more of a bold look. But I love it, this is so pretty. One great thing about this too is you can do more layers. Absolutely. So that could be your first layer and yeah. then you could do another one and you can add so much depth. Yeah, and so being that it's the amazing quick coat, I could probably re-layer this in just a few hours because mm -hmm. it's gonna be uh, good to touch within just a couple of hours and I can do it again. So that's probably yeah. what I'm gonna do. Alrighty, so we're gonna show you now how to flood coat a vase that we did yesterday. So this vase, Marcy did an acrylic pour a couple of days ago, actually yesterday. And then I came back in with some gold uh, foil and I, I foiled it and made it just, you know, you know me, take it to the next step. But now what I'm gonna do is a clear flood coat and I'm using the regular art coat and I have added just a little bit of bling bling, diamond dust. You don't have to do this on a cup turner. You can do it like we did the first pour, put it on a cup and let it go down. I'm just gonna do it this way. I like this way a little bit better, you know, because I've done so many, damn many of these. All right, so by doing it on a turner, I don't really have to worry about the drips. For this size, I came in with four ounces. You don't wanna put too much product because you'll get um, like a buildup of your epoxy. So just do a little bit at a time. Really stretch it over, run your hands down. All right, so if you guys are going to be doing these larger vases, 
you're gonna wanna get a larger cup turner. Um, just spend the money and get you one that's, that's a little uh, nicer because those are gonna hold your bigger material. Some of the cheaper Amazon ones or even the ones they have at Hobby Lobby, they're a little too th easy, lightweight to handle some of these, these bigger projects. I'll link where I got this. I got this off of Etsy and this one I really like because I can change the direction of it depending on what hand I'm using. And then you also want to take your hand and seal that edge. So this particular cup turner will do five at one time. All right, so once I feel I have it covered nice, I don't want to get too much. I'm just gonna use my hand and I can even wipe off some of the extra resin so I don't get a buildup around the bottom as it spins. How to figure how much resin you need? You I don't know, I was just, yeah. Good. So with the vase, I obviously mixed up way too much. I used about two ounces. With my large tumblers, I use about 25 mils depending on the size of the tumbler, but you can always just wipe it, the excess off. All right. Now, if so I had you bubbles. You really get into there. Yeah. You missed a lot of sections in there. Now you can hit this ever so lightly with the torch if you need to pop your bubbles, but I'm not seeing any bubbles. We've got it pretty warm in here right now, but it really does make that, those colors just pop. And does it just need the single coat? Yes, yes. So this this is right. just one. I just oops. So it's going to be super smooth now. If something happens and maybe I missed a spot or it just doesn't come out as smooth as I like it, I can always do another coat. So because it's so thin, you can build your coats. But as far as durability, one coat is going to be great. So for the art coat, I'm going to let this spin probably a good eight to 10 hours, depending on the uh, heat, but I'm not gonna touch it for a full 24 hours. So if you're, you, can, you can leave it as turning as long as you need to, um, but probably after about eight or 10 hours, it's gonna quit dripping. I could then turn it off, but I don't wanna touch it or do anything with it for at least 24 hours. Now you can use the Amazing Quick Coat if you maybe have a darker color and that actually only has to spend for a couple of hours and you can take that off your tumbler, you can take that off your cup turner in about four hours. Marcy, thank you. I had so much fun. Rhonda, you're welcome. Oh, right. You're always so much fun. I have the best time with this chick right here. All of these products on the resin side can be bought on my website rk3designs.com remember guys we do free shipping for orders over a hundred dollars and same day shipping if you order before noon where do you buy your stuff mixedmediagirl.com so check out um, my resin vases my acrylic pour projects you can check those all out on my facebook page or my youtube mixed media girl and then my products at mixedmediagirl.com she's everywhere all right, guys, if you like this kind of content and you'd like to see some more, let me know in the comments below. Let me see what you would like. And don't forget to check her out, guys. She's got some amazing projects. All right, until next time, remember. Do you remember? Something and move forward. Don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be scared. Don't be scared. Move forward. Don't be scared. Move forward. And be creative. And be creative. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.